Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 9 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. Let us now talk about the physical properties of alkanes. You know, the physical properties of a molecule depend on about three factors. The first is the nature of the bonding in the, uh, in the molecule. What is the kind of molecule? Is it, is it ionic in nature? Is it covalent in nature? What is the electronegativity difference? So basically the nature of the molecule. And the second thing that the properties, physical properties would depend on would be the size, the mass, the shape, right? So these are the three factors, that is the nature, the polarity of the molecule, the size of the molecule, and the shape of the molecule, which would determine its uh, physical properties. So the same is seen in the case of alkanes also. And since alkanes is a, uh, it is a homologous series of thousands of hydrocarbons, so these are the factors that would decide the nature or the physical properties of these alkanes. The first thing we notice is that alkanes are non-polar in nature. And why are they non-polar? Because carbon, uh, alkanes are hydrocarbons. They are made up of carbon and hydrogen. The electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is very less. Therefore, they form covalent bonds which are pretty balanced. There is no, you know, shifting towards of the electrons towards one atom to make it a polar bond. It may be covalent, yet it has some amount of polarity. That does not happen here they almost have comparable electronegativities due to which it's a very neutral uh, molecule. It's a very neutral bond. There is no shifting of electrons. They're just happy where they are sharing it equally. So it's a pretty non-polar molecule. These molecules are very non-polar. And since they are non-polar, a lot of their properties depend on their non-polarity. Second thing, when the molecules are non-polar, what would be the forces of attraction or repulsion that would exist between molecules? When you have an ionic bond between molecules, the molecule will have or a partially covalent or you could say um, a polar covalent bond. A part of the molecule would be positive and a part of it would be negative. And wherever this electrostatic forces are uh, you know, there is a polarity created where positive and negative electric charges are separate or separation of charges is there. There will be stronger attractions there because the positive end of one molecule will attract the negative end of the surrounding molecules. Similarly, the negative end of one molecule would attract the positive ends of all other molecules. So there would be a stronger attraction between the opposite charges and there would be a repulsion with similar charges. So the forces, interactive forces would be stronger. But since this alkanes are non-polar in nature, since they do not have that kind of a uh, polarity in the molecule, the, the separation of charges is not there, the only forces that exist between any two uh, substances or any two molecules would be the weakest van der Waals forces. So they possess the weak, the, the Van der Waals forces of attraction, which are pretty weak since there is no polarity. As a result of this, what do we see? We see that the physical state of the alkanes would also depend on the second factor. One, that the forces of attraction are very weak. Second, the physical state will depend on the mass of the molecule. So alkanes from C1 to C4, that is methane, ethane, propane, butane, are the lightest ones. And since they do not have strong attractions between the molecules, they only have weak van der Waals forces, they will exist as gases. They would live as, they would stay as gases at room temperature. And from C5 to C17, that is from carbon pentane, to carbon-17 hydrocarbon or alkane, they will all be liquids. And alkanes from carbon-18, which has 18 carbon atoms in one molecule onwards, 18, 19, up to whatever number, they will all be solids. So the lighter ones would be C1 to C4 would exist as gases, C5 to C17 would exist as liquids, 
and C18 onwards would be solids. This again depends on the size of the molecule, which is which you can see from our categorization of the number of carbon atoms. So the mass of the molecule and the fact that they are nonpolar, they are weak van der Waals forces, therefore these would be the physical states. Another thing that these are colorless and odorless. Uh, ionic compounds usually have those colors, you know, the beautiful color of copper sulfate and you have uh, different colors of different compounds or ionic compounds, they usually have colors because the ions, when you heat them up, they lose electrons and the jumping electrons will create uh, a color in the flame. So they are more colorful. As you come to more covalent compounds, they are colorless. They are kind of bland. Now, since they are non-polar in nature, water on the other hand is a polar solvent. Water is partially ionic or it is a polar covalent molecule. Since it is polar covalent, it dissolves polar substances in it. So it dissolves ionic substances in it. But it does not dissolve a non-polar solvent. Have you seen if you put oil over water yeah, and you shake the bottle and you leave it for some time, you'll see the bubbles, the dispersed, you know, colloidal solution will be created. And then we'll let it rest for some time and you will notice that the oil will come on top and the water will go down to the bottom. The oil always floats on top of water. Why? Because oil is basically hydrocarbons and oil does not have, is non-polar in nature while water is polar in nature. So the, a non-polar solute cannot dissolve in a polar solvent. A non-polar solute will dissolve in a polar, uh, in a non-polar solvent. So since these are non-polar in nature, they will not dissolve in water. They are insoluble in water. Why? Because water is, uh, is a polar solvent. Now an example, petrol. Petrol is a mixture of hydrocarbons and what are the uses of petrol? Petrol is used, number one, as a fuel. Why is it used as a fuel? Of course, because it has carbon and hydrogen. When you burn petroleum, the carbon of the molecule burns to give you carbon dioxide and hydrogen burns to give you water. You know, when we inhale oxygen, what is the reaction of uh, that is taking place? The petrol is burning in the presence of oxygen. So what are the three elements there? Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The same happens when we inhale in our respiration and uh, process what happens. The food that we digest in our body that is assimilated, it goes to every cell of the body. And then what is cellular respiration? We take in oxygen. Oxygen goes to every cell through our, of course, through our blood. It is carried through the blood with hemoglobin or whatever the physiology is there. But that oxygen reaches every cell and the food that is sitting there to be converted to energy, it reacts with that food. And what is the food? Hydrocarbons. So the carbon and the hydrogen, they combine with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And when we exhale on a glass, let us say, you'll see moisture over the glass. So and carbon dioxide is given out. It is the same, the same products only. In our body, it is taking place at a uh, at the temperature at the body temperature. While when you use it as a fuel, the temperatures may go up to thousands of degrees if you if you're using a lot of fuel. So petrol is actually a mixture of hydrocarbons and it is used as a fuel. We already know that because it consists of carbon and hydrogen, which would combine with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And it is also used for dry cleaning. One of the uses is dry cleaning. This is interesting. Why is it used for dry cleaning? Why do we use uh, petrol for dry cleaning? Have you noticed if you have a sticker uh, on, on uh, something? I have a flask. Let me bring it. Look, I have this flask. And in this flask, do you see there's a sticker that I removed? I wonder if it is visible in the camera. But I removed a sticker from here and it is still pasty and I used, I washed it well, yet I could not remove it with soap and water. I could not remove it because this gum or the glue that has been put is non-polar in nature. And I tried to use soap and water, which are again kind of polar. Water is polar, is a polar solvent, and the soap molecule has one end which is non-polar, but one end which is polar. So both of them together, the polarity of both of them did not help me with this uh, glue. 
So what is my option? How can I remove it? If I keep one way is to keep scrubbing it and then since it is steel, it will have, uh, you know, marks on it. I don't want that. So what should I do? My other option would be I, do, I take petroleum jelly. What is petroleum jelly? It is nothing but a byproduct of petrol. When you get petroleum, the heavier fractions, they are used as petroleum jelly. So these are heavier alkanes. So what will I do? I put a little bit of oil or petroleum jelly on one side of the sticker. And just rub it well. And since the glue is going to dissolve in this petroleum jelly, since this is also non-polar in nature, for some time I'm going to rub this with it. And when I wipe it off with a tissue or a paper towel, now if I wipe it off with a paper towel, you will notice that some of the glue is gone, which could not go with water. Can you see this little bit that I worked on? I had to work on it a little more. But then it will not, it did not dissolve in soap and water, but it will dissolve, the glue is going to dissolve in oil. That is what happens in dry cleaning. When you have grease stained clothes or oily substance on the clothes, why do we use petrol and not water and soap? Why do we dry clean clothes? Because grease is again non-polar in nature. It will not dissolve in water and soap and be cleaned. Instead, you will use petrol and you'll wash it in petrol. And when you do that, when you use petrol over it, that grease is going to dissolve in the petrol, which is a non-polar solvent. And therefore, you'll be able to clean it up. So it acts as a non-polar solvent. Therefore, petrol, petrol is nothing but alkanes or hydrocarbons, a mixture of hydrocarbons. So it is used, it acts as a non-polar solvent. Any of the alkanes or a mixture of alkanes will act as a non-polar solvent. And it can remove grease, that is mixture of higher alkanes. Grease is nothing but mixture of higher alkanes. Even glue is non-polar in nature. And therefore we say that these molecules are hydrophobic in nature. Hydro means water and phobia means fear. It has a fear of water. It does not dissolve in water. And that's the reason why this saying is often said that like dissolves like. You know, we often use it uh, and not in terms of chemistry. Sometimes we use it uh, to tease our kids. If you're a naughty kid, you're going to have naughty friends. If you are that serious kind of a kid, you're going to have those serious kind of friends. Usually, you know, like dissolves you. You attract people who are more like you and you are kind of repelled by someone who is not so much like you. You're a very peace loving person and there's one person who's so buoyant you would rather stay away. And on the other hand, one person is so buoyant and cheerful and there's one serious one there, he would stay away from there. Therefore, like dissolves like. Similar molecules, similar solvent and similar solute will dissolve. So non-polar solute will dissolve in a non-polar solvent and a polar solute will dissolve in a polar solvent. And since these are non-polar in nature, they act as non-polar solvents. Now come to the next property that is boiling point. Now boiling point depends on, again, two characteristics. One is the size, that is the mass of the molecule. And the second is the shape of the molecule. So that is what we see. As the molecular mass increases, as the size of the molecule increases, it becomes heavier. It becomes more difficult to warm it up every molecule to turn it into a, um, into a liquid for its melting point. And then if it turns into a liquid to heat it up to turn into a, a gas. So the melting point and boiling point depend on the mass. Why mass? Because as the mass increases, how is the mass increasing in the homologous series? Methane has one carbon atom, four hydrogens. Ethane has two carbon atoms, six hydrogens. And you see the molecule, the size of the molecule is increasing. As the size of the molecule increases, the surface area increases. As the surface area increases, the van der Waals forces are nothing but forces that are active at the surface. The more the surface area, the more is the van der Waals force. 
If the surface area is smaller, then the van der Waals forces will be lesser. The same thing if it is like a sphere, like a ball, it will have less forces because the surface is smaller. But if the same thing is spread out like a flat sheet, then it will have far more. It will have more uh, forces of attraction because the van der Waals forces depend on the surface area. So as the molecule, the mass increases, the size of the molecule is increasing. As the size of the molecule is increasing, the boiling point will also increase. For example, methane has a mass of 16 U, that is 16 atomic mass units. Its boiling point is 111 Kelvin and its melting point is 90.5 Kelvin. Okay, now compare it. The mass goes up from 16, 16 to 30. In methane, the boiling point it was 111, it goes up to 184.4, the melting point was 90.5 Kelvin, it comes up to 101 Kelvin. So if we really look at only the boiling points, the mass was 16, 30, 44, and the boiling point went up from 111 to 184 to 230.9. So the boiling point keeps increasing as the size of the molecule and therefore the mass of the molecule or the surface area of the molecule increases. Right Now we know we have studied about isomers in the case of alkanes or uh, hydrocarbons. You can have isomeric pentane. You can have pentane molecule in different shapes. Would that affect the boiling point? Now every isomer of pentane has the same formula. And what is the formula? It is C5H12. All right. And the mass of every molecule is 72 U or 72 atomic mass units or 72 grams per mole. So all isomeric pentanes have the same mass. If they all have the same mass, they should have the same boiling point. But that does not happen. We find that the boiling point is different. And now, what could be the reason for the difference in their boiling points? Look here, this is normal pentane. That is in the form of a single chain. It is 309.1 Kelvin is the boiling point. If you have 2-methyl butane, it's branched. Now, it has become a little condensed. The structure is smaller. So the boiling point reduces to 300.9 and 2,2-dimethyl propane is even smaller. It is more like a sphere, you know, these uh, four bonds are along the tetrahedrons. Like if this is the carbon, central carbon, then the four bonds are like this. Now they are, it is, if you imagine this to be a sphere, it is almost a spherical molecule. And since it is a spherical molecule, you will feel now this, the boiling point has come down even more to 282.5. Although all three isomeric pentanes have the same number of atoms in them, they have the same mass, yet because of the difference in their structures, their boiling points are different. The, the smaller the surface area of the structure, the smaller the surface area of the molecule, the lower will be the boiling point because weaker would be the van der Waals forces. The larger, the more expansive structure, the more are the van der Waals forces, more is the surface area and therefore the boiling point would be higher. So boiling point would depend on the expanse, the size of the molecule, the mass of the molecule and the structure, that is the shape of the molecule. So with this, I'll wind up the physical properties of alkanes. And if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.